So very good evening to you all, and I hope you all are doing well. Uh, welcome back to my channel of Mastering Endocrine and Diabetes with Dr. Mazu Balvi. Uh, as you know, over the last two to two and a half years, I've uploaded a total of 52 videos and lectures, uh, which has helped uh, candidates and uh, trainees, as well as practicing endocrinologists all over the world uh, to help them clear different exams, specialty certificate, European board exam, EM endocrinology, and even practicing endocrinologists all over the world. Now, I wanted to update you all that uh, all the videos are now available on the basis of a one-time subscription fee, which will grant you access to all the 52 videos which are uh, available on my channel. How to go about it? I will just update you in this short presentation. So the access is now available on a nominal one-time fee for the subscription. Uh, and that will grant you lifetime access to all the 52 lectures and which will definitely help you with the exams as well as with your clinical practice. For subscribing to it, please direct message me on WhatsApp, which is 00971557434794. The same number is on Telegram as well. Or you can email me on mazirules at gmail.com. Of course, those who have been my avid listeners, they all know about their lectures and the uh, topics which are available on the channel. Uh, I would like to just describe them to you all, all in the next few slides. So first we have a session on hypercalcemia where we talk about causes, symptoms, diagnosis, treatment, and all our lectures and videos are a case-based approach. So they use cases uh, to help teach you uh, about the uh, topic, which is uh, very, very helpful when we are uh, thinking in context of clinical practice, as well as the exams. In the topic of hypercalcemia, we have discussed about hyperparathyroidism, FHH, vitamin D toxicity, humoral hypercalcemia malignancy, the second lecture is on case-based interpretation of thyroid function test. The third lecture is about a case-based approach for classification of diabetes. Then there is a case-based approach on pheopromocytoma and paraganglioma, which covers the endocrine society clinical practice guidelines recommendations. There's a case-based approach on acromegaly. Again, it covers the endocrine society clinical practice guidelines recommendations. There is a session on the thyroid uptake scan interpretations, various exam-based scenarios are there discussed. Then there is a lecture on adrenal insufficiency. Here I have covered the Endocrine Society clinical practice guidelines recommendations. Then there is a, a session on hypocalcemia, uh, where I've talked about hypoparathyroidism versus pseudo-hypoparathyroidism versus pseudo-pseudo-hypoparathyroidism. Here we have covered the European Society of Endocrinology guideline recommendations for hypoparathyroidism. Then there is a session on hyperaldosteronism and con syndrome. Here I have talked in detail about how and when should we do adrenal vein sampling for differentiating between lateral and bilateral disease. And the overall topic is based on endocrine society clinical practice guidelines recommendations. Then there is a very extensive lecture on a case-based approach to Barter syndrome, Little syndrome, apparent mineralocorticoid excess, and little known syndrome. There is a session on uh, driver and vehicle licensing agency guidelines uh, and diabetes. There is an extensive session on diabetes in pregnancy, again a case-based approach. This video discusses four cases in details, and that incorporates the latest NICE guidelines as well as the Joint British Diabetes Society guidelines. There is a case or based on preconception care, GDM, pre existing type 2 diabetes in pregnancy, and steroid induced hypoglycemia in pregnancy cases. Going on to the next slide, uh, there's a lecture series on uh, congenital adrenal hypoplasia. It covers various scenarios which are extremely high yield for different endocrinology exams and covers again the endocrine society guidelines for management of CH. There is a lecture on gynecomastia. A uh, case based approach towards diagnosis, differential, and management. Cushing syndrome, there's one lecture on diagnosis and one lecture on treatment. 
uh, again case based approach this video illustrates how to arrive at the diagnosis of Cushing syndrome uh, it also helps in finding the cause of Cushing syndrome once the diagnosis is confirmed it covers all the caveats which appear in exams as regards to screening test helps in interpreting inferior petrosal sinus sampling results and of course it also covers the endocrine society guidelines and all of them again via PhD. Next, there is a very extensive session on familial lipid disorders and familial hypercholesteremia. Again, uh, it's a case-based approach uh, lecture, uh, helps identifying key clinical findings and key laboratory parameters, which helps us arrive at diagnosis of each of the five hyperlipoproteinemias. This video also covers the NICE guidelines for familial hypercholesteremia and also talks about low HDL syndromes and low cholesterol syndrome. So this is um, uh, the full coverage for the lipid disorders. Uh, then there is a session on the high yield questions and topics for thyroid. And this covers all the important topics and themes which have appeared in the past specialty and European board exams in the form of questions and answers with detailed explanation. And of course, they are always very high yield for the upcoming exams. There is a lecture session on Kalman syndrome. Uh, I, I have talked about constitutional delay of puberty there, also Klein Pinter syndrome as well. Uh, delayed puberty, I've talked about in boys. Then I have talked about Kalman syndrome and Klein Pinter syndromes. I've discussed the key genetic mutations in idiopathic hypogonadotropic hypogonadism, which is extremely important for endocrine exams. It also helps in looking for key features to differentiate between constitutional delay of growth in puberty versus idiopathic hypogonadotropic hypogonadism. And it covers in full the diagnostic and management approach to Kalman's, other forms of IHH, CDGP, and Clanfenter syndrome. Then there are two sessions on adrenal where I have covered the high yield questions and topics which have appeared in the past specialty exams and European board exams related to adrenals. There's one session on transgender women, trans women. Uh, here I've covered all the important aspects concerning evaluation, monitoring, as well as management of transgender females. I have also covered the endocrine society guidelines pertaining to it in this. There is a lecture on perioperative diabetes guidelines, which is incorporating the latest joint British Diabetic Society guidelines, which were published in 2021. All the details are done via case-based approach. Uh, we have taken different scenarios, patients undergoing elective surgery, patients undergoing emergency surgery. It covers dose modification for oral anti-diabetic agents, as well as injectables, whether insulin or non-insulin injectables, in the perioperative or the preoperative period and on the day of the surgery. It also provides very clear indications uh, about using of variable rate insulin fusion and fixed rate insulin fusion. So a very important session there as well. Moving on to the next uh, set of lectures, uh, PGT MRI interpretation, extremely important for exams. I've uh, put many images here, which are uh, which have commonly appeared in exams. Uh, these are linked to case-based scenarios so that you can learn them well. And high yield facts, which commonly appear in exams, are mentioned in each case scenario. Uh, diabetic retinopathy, again, the last example was full of images of diabetic retinopathy. Uh, in this session, I've covered the diabetic eye screening and referral and uh, uh, pathways. It also discussed in details the NHS and National Screening Committee recommendations for diabetes eye screening and referral. It highlights the recommendations for diabetic retinopathy screening before and during pregnancy period and in patients with pre existing diabetes. So extremely important uh, session on diabetic retinopathy. Moving forward, uh, again, one of the candidates' favorites, the session on osteoporosis, uh, where I've discussed about the NICE and the NOG guidelines, um, and they are repeatedly appearing in different endocrine exams. It also covers the management of glucocorticoid-induced osteoporosis and bone loss occurring in certain conditions like Paget's disease, aromatase inhibitor usage, and androgen deprivation therapy. So three, again, uh, difficult topics, but all incorporated into session of osteoporosis. Uh, I've done a lecture on the cardiovascular outcome trials where uh, I've covered all the important drugs uh, used in diabetes and their cardiovascular outcome trials up to date. It covers all the trials related to GLP-1 agonist 
SGLT2 inhibitors, PPP4 inhibitors, insulin, and pyoglitazone. It also covers an important concept of number needed to treat, which has also appeared in a couple of exams in the past. Uh, the, there is a session, as I mentioned, on Cushing syndrome diagnosis, and there is another session on Cushing syndrome treatment. And here I have covered the Endocrine Society guidelines. There is detailed discussion about surgical treatment, radiotherapy, and different forms of medical treatment. Uh, covers all important mechanism fraction of drugs, again, repeatedly uh, occurring in exams, repeatedly asked in exams, the mechanism fraction of different drugs used for the treatment of Cushing's, monitoring aspects and side effects of each of the medical, surgical, and radiotherapy options available for Cushing's and recurring Cushing's. Uh, then there is a very clinically oriented practical session on calculating and adjusting insulin dosage, how to use insulin carb ratio, insulin sensitivity factor, carb counting. And again, uh, in the last few exams, this has appeared an extremely important topic for clinical practice as well. Uh, then there is a uh, amazing session on insulin pump medication, where I've talked about the basics as well as the advance of the insulin pump. Uh, it provides guidance in setting of an insulin pump, calculating basal rate, testing and adjusting basal rates, using different type of boluses like square wave bolus, extended bolus, super bolus, et cetera. Uh, the concept of insulin on board or active insulin time and blood glucose targets. Also detailed guidance for adjustment of insulin pump settings is discussed in different scenarios like at the times of exercise, during times of hyperglycemia, hypoglycemia, during the times of sick day use, during pregnancy, menstruation, operative procedures, steroid induced hyperglycemia, during travel, as well as during undergoing radiological investigation. There's also an overview of augmented sensor pump therapy and closed loop insulin delivery system, which is the artificial pancreas is also discussed. Then there is a very important lecture on non-diabetic hypoglycemia, uh, where I have talked about the differential diagnosis between insulinoma, non-islet cell tumor hypoglycemia, non-insulinoma pancreatogenous hypoglycemia, insulin autoimmune hypoglycemia, as well as the postprandial hypoglycemia. Again, this topic is extremely important for exams. Several questions are asked in the exams from this particular topic. Uh, next, I've talked about uh, the uh, general evaluation and diagnosis of hirsutism, virilization, and in this, of course, we have talked about polycystic ovarian syndrome, hyperandrogenism, and other causes of the same. So detailed evaluation and case-based approach to pre-penopausal and post-menopausal hirsutism has been discussed by me in this video. Uh, differential diagnosis of PCOS, non-classical CH, androgen secreting tumors, ovarian hyperthicosis, idiopathic hyper hirsutism, hypertricosis, and idiopathic hyperandrogenism has all been discussed by me by case-based scenarios in this particular topic. And I have definitely taken into consideration the endocrine society guidelines, clinical practice recommendations and nurse. Moving on, uh, after the diagnosis uh, lecture, there is a lecture on details of the management and treatment of PCOS and other causes of hirsutism. Uh, this video done by me describes the details of the management of PCOS and all its aspects. It also discusses the treatment of other causes of hirsutism like non-classical CH, ovarian hyperthicosis, adrenal and ovarian tumors. And of course, it covers the endocrine society clinical practice. Uh, hypoglycemia treatment, again, treating low blood sugar by a case-based approach. Hospital management of hypoglycemia in adults with diabetes has been discussed, and this has taken into consideration the JBDS guidelines, which are in relation to hypoglycemia. It covers treatment of all mild, moderate, and severe hypoglycemia. Also, management of hypoglycemia in the setting of an enteral feeding and TPN has been covered. Use of glucagon, intramuscular, as well as the nasal forms has been discussed and quick overview of the factors which can potentiate or precipitate hypoglycemia has also been discussed. Then there is a very important session on steroid-induced hyperglycemia slash diabetes. And this video covered by me mentions all about the JBDS May 2021 guidelines for the treatment of steroid-induced hyperglycemia, steroid-induced diabetes. And of course, as my pattern, I have used case-based scenarios uh, to elaborate the same a brief overview of the management of steroid-induced hyperglycemia, even in the context of pregnancy and COVID-19, and steroid use has also been discussed. Moving on, 
there is a, a lecture on thyroid storm, uh, its evaluation, diagnosis, and uh, management. Uh, there is a lecture on pituitary apoplexy, discovers the endocrine society guidelines of pituitary apoplexy. Again, I've done this through a case-based approach. There is a very important session on multiple endocrine neoplasia type 1, where I've discussed the signs, symptom, diagnosis, and treatment. A very important syndrome for exams, Cowden syndrome, is also one of the sessions. And again, I have done this through a case-based approach. Then uh, uh, my colleague, uh, Dr. Hia, has done a session on diabetic ketoacidosis, where she has incorporated the Joint British Diabetic Guidelines, which were published in 2021. I have done one session on adrenal incidentaloma, uh, where I have uh, covered via case-based approach the endocrine society, as well as the European society guidelines surrounding the same. Uh, there are two important sessions of lab endocrinology uh, by Dr. Well Murugan, my colleague, uh, where he's uh, discussed with the help of clinical scenarios, immunoassay, mass spectrometry, HPLC, LCMS, and again, biotin interference, hook effect, heterophile antibodies, quality control. So two, again, important sessions of lab endocrinology. Uh, then there are all high yield lectures uh, uh, where I have uh, covered uh, along with uh, uh, Dr. Rana Siddiqui has actually done these sessions. Uh, he is a, a UK trainee uh, and has covered in these three sessions all the important uh, high yield endocrine and diabetes concepts, which will be very helpful for a quick revision. Uh, prior to your specialty exams or European board exams or MRCP exams for that matter. Uh, it has been covered so nicely and so uh, uh, elaborately that uh, it really serves a quick revision uh, for all the candidates appearing for the exam. So all the three sessions are extremely important. Then there is a session on dynamic risk stratification and TSF suppression in differentiated thyroid cancer where uh, my professor, Professor Mark Strachan, has covered the British Thyroid Association guidelines along with the APA guidelines. Then there is a clinically oriented practical session. And of course, nowadays, many questions are appearing related to continuous glucose monitoring in the exams as well. I've talked about uh, the basics of CGM, uh, Dexcom G6, uh, Freestyle Libre, Medtronic CGM. I've discussed the time and range concepts and interpretation. There is another session coming up soon where I'll be putting up the uh, part two of this session where I've uh, discussed via cases, different interpretations of the CGM. Then there is another very uh, amazing session on diabetes insipidus and case-based approach uh, to polyuria and understanding the water depression test by Dr. Well Merugan, my colleague. Uh, I've done one session on immune checkpoint inhibitors, very commonly appearing in exams. The endocrinopathies related to the immune checkpoint inhibitors the endocrine society guidelines surrounding the immune checkpoint inhibitors. Very commonly occurring topic for all the exams. And lastly, I've done a session on the uh, another diabetic emergency, which is hyperosmolar, hyperglycemic, non-ketotic coma. And here I've covered the Joint British Diabetic Society guidelines, which were published in 2020. So once again, uh, all of these are available on a nominal one-time fee. And uh, with that fee, you can gain access to all these 52 lectures and that to a lifetime access. So as I mentioned for subscribing, you can direct message me on my WhatsApp or my email ID, and I'll let you know how to go forward. With this, I'd like to wish you all all the best for the upcoming exams in 2023. And thank you for all the love and support which you all have shown to me over the last two years. And I wish it just keeps growing. Thank you so much. Thank you.